Uh, a few months ago, when uh, I was in Indonesia, uh, I had a chance to preview uh, my country's approach to this vast and vital part of the world. I laid out the five core elements of our engagement. First, advancing a free and open Indo-Pacific. Second, forging stronger connections within and beyond the region. Third, promoting broad-based prosperity. Fourth, helping build resilience. And fifth, bolstering security. Today, the United States is releasing our Indo-Pacific strategy in full. It's the result of a year of intensive engagement and consultation with allies and partners across the region and beyond, and hearing directly from its people about what's most important to them. And it reflects the fundamental <coughs> truth that no region on Earth will affect the lives and livelihoods of Americans more than the Indo-Pacific, which accounts for 60 percent of the global economy, two-thirds of all economic growth over the last five years. Every defining issue of uh, the 21st century runs through this region. Uh, the climate crisis, global health, the future of technology, whether nations will be free to chart their own path or be subject to coercion by more powerful nations. Our strategy is built on collaboration. We want to develop sustained, innovative, mutually reinforcing partnerships across the Indo-Pacific with our allies, our partners, with regional institutions like ASEAN, APEC, which the United States will host next year, the Pacific Islands Forum, which Fiji is sharing this year. We're strengthening our relationships in every corner of the region, building on our long-standing ties in Northeast Asia and Australia and New Zealand, uh, investing more deeply in the Pacific Islands, Southeast Asia, and South Asia. We're also forging new connections across continents between our European and Indo-Pacific partners, as only the United States can do. The European Union's first ever Indo-Pacific strategy aligns with our own, and the United States is increasingly speaking with one voice with our NATO allies and our G7 partners when it comes to Indo-Pacific matters. You can see the strength of that commitment to the Indo-Pacific throughout the past year. Just look at uh, some of the key markers on our calendar, from President Biden being the first U.S. President to address the Pacific Islands Forum, to our increasing engagement with the Quad, whose ministers I just met with in Melbourne, to deepening our cooperation on a range of security and defense priorities through AUKUS. We also intend to open a U.S. Embassy uh, in the Solomon Islands in its capital city to deepen our cooperation with Pacific Island partners. And these steps are only the beginning. We'll continue to advance our engagement and investments in the Indo-Pacific.